we go with ideal gas law notes. Give this a little pin so we can get going here. All right. Uh, the ideal gas law, what is it? Well, it is the last gas law that we will have to deal with in this little section. And it basically is, it's, kind of, it's the mother of all gas laws because it relates everything. It takes Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Avogadro's Law, all of them, and puts them together into one nice, neat little package. Keep in mind, though, this is the ideal gas law, not the real gas law. Ideal gases are imaginary gases that just help us give, they just help us have a good idea of what is going to happen with a real gas. They're a great predictor of what is going to happen, but they're not perfect. So here she is. This is the ideal gas law, also known as Pivnert. Now, unlike the other gas laws where the units, they didn't really matter what units it was in. Of course, you know, temperature always has to be in Kelvin, but pressure and volume didn't matter if it was in, you know, pressure was in atmospheres or tour, whatever, as long as they matched. With Pivnert, it does matter. So, I'm going to write it over here. P always has to be in atmospheres. V, volume, always has to be in liters. Of course, N, number of moles, is going to be moles. And T still has to be in Kelvin. So, why do these uh, variables all have to be in these specific units? Well, it's because of this new letter right here. This R stands for a very special number that actually relates all of these variables so that we can convert between them. And R is known as the ideal gas constant. And there are two different ways that you can um, do R. You can have the way that we'll use most often in chemistry, which is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. You notice this all matches this over here. And then you have the other one, which uh, is used a little more often in physics and is used in uh, thermodynamics, which is something that we would get to in AP chemistry if you so choose to take that. And then it's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And this, not really true, so, you know, ignore that. I don't know why I put that in there. Really, 8.314 is used whenever you are dealing with or want to deal with joules, which if you remember, is the unit of measure for energy. So I don't want you thinking that these two numbers are different because they're actually not. They're just two ways of representing the exact same thing, the same way that like 12 inches is equal to one foot. These two numbers, different numbers, different units, but they represent the exact same thing. These two numbers, same idea. They're different numbers, different units, but they represent the exact same thing. All right. Big thing is to be sure to check your units before using Pivner. You've got to make sure that everything is in the right units. Atmospheres, liters, moles, and Kelvin. All right, so there's a couple of different versions of Pivner. Because Pivner, you know, PV equals NRT, the N stands for moles, and moles sometimes just isn't a realistic measurement. It's not something that people can easily envision. But mass, on the other hand, you can. You understand mass. So this next thing I'm going to go through is proving the two different versions of PivNerd. If you don't care to hear that, you don't need to know it, then you can skip through probably the next three or four minutes of this uh, lecture. If you want to hear it just out of curiosity, then keep listening. So molar mass is equal to it's represented by a capital M, is equal to mass over number of moles. Mass is always abbreviated with a little m. Number of moles is always abbreviated with a little n. So if we take piv, if we take, oh, hang on first. Let's solve this. I'm going to just write this out. M equals little m over n. If we rearrange this to solve for n, you get that n equals little m over big M. Well, we have pivnert. If n is equal to little m over big M, well, then we can just plug that right on in here and say PV equals little m over big M 
r t and y'all know how much i hate fractions so multiply both sides by big m and you get these guys cancel out you get this right here which i call pivum mert the only thing you got to remember is that big m molar mass comes before little m so pivum mert you got pivnert when you're dealing with moles you got pivum mert when you're dealing with mass now there's one more version and that is density so if we use pivum mert And we know that density is equal to mass over volume. So divide both sides by volume. Volume cancels out. And we end up with PM equals MRT over V. Well, hey, look at this. M over V, M over V. So if we just cross this out and substitute it with a D, you have and rearrange these guys just so they make something that sounds good. Mop dirt, or dirt mop if that makes you feel better. And this is the version of Pivnert that you use when you are dealing with density. And keep in mind, the units in, of density are gonna be mass is measured in grams, volume is measured in liters. So density is gonna be grams per liters when you're talking about a gas. So that's the reason, that's the proof, I guess, for why we can uh, do this. So now all we have left is examples. So um, you look through as many examples as you need to. Uh, if you don't feel the need to watch any examples, then you can consider yourself done with notes. So our first example is going to be uh, what is the pressure in atmospheres? So what is the pressure is our question exerted by a 0.5 mole. The mole right there tells us that we are using PV equals nRT, since we're dealing with moles, we need an N, of nitrogen gas in a 10 liter container at 298 Kelvin. So P, V, N, R, and T. There we go, get it set up, doing the guess method. What is the pressure? So that means P is X. Volume is 10.0 liters. N is 0.5 moles. R is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And temperature is 298 Kelvin. So since I'm solving, I need to find pressure. I'm gonna rearrange this equation to solve for pressure so that it looks like this. Plug in my numbers, 0.5. 0 0.0821 times 298 divided by 10. Plug that into your calculator and you get that pressure equals incorrect sig figs 1.22 atmospheres. Now, a couple of things to point out. R, 0 0.0821. A lot of times this is represented as 0 0.08206 for sig figs as opposed to 3. Three sig figs is fine. It's the way that it's given on the AP exam, so it's the way that I'm gonna expect you guys uh, to use it in my class. And remember, I told you guys you don't have to memorize this number because it is on the formula chart on the AP exam. So you'll probably end up memorizing it anyways because you use it so much, but it's not like I'm gonna ask you a question, what is point, or what is R? You know, All right, next example. I think I'm gonna have to start a new video. Nope, I can probably fit it in. Okay, what is the volume in liters of 2.25 moles? Hey, there's moles again, so that means I'm using PIVNERT. So what is the volume of oxygen gas at 20 degrees Celsius in 0.974 atmospheres? So P, V, N, R, T. The pressure was 0 0.974, volume is X. N is 0 0.250, R is 0 0.0821, and temperature was 293. So rearrange this equation for volume, and you get NRT over P. N was 0 0.25, R 0 0.0821, T is 293, divided by a pressure of 0 0.0821. 
974. Get out your handy little calculator. I don't remember what the answer to this one is, to be perfectly honest with you. 0.25 times 0 0.0821 times 293 equals divided by 0.974 gives us a grand total of 6.17 liters. Now, if you have any more questions, I'm going to do one more video and include the rest of the examples so you can watch that if you need to see some more examples. And any other questions, just come on in and ask. See y'all later.